This is a flight with my instructor which combines two different tests. The first is a annual flight test for the gyrocopter itself which is required for permit renewal with the LAO, the Light Aircraft Association. And the second element is the final 15 minutes or so of my biennial flight review. We'd done the first part of my BFR a couple of weeks previously but we'd run out of daylight so the idea was just to tag the few manoeuvres we hadn't done onto the end of this flight. So we're currently lining up on runway 30 at Ashcroft. I'd never used this runway before but it's slightly elevated which means that it does naturally drain which was useful given how damp the surrounding area was. But it's also curved shaped as you see once we're airborne and not the longest runway. Now because we are at maximum all up weight 450 kilos which is required by the flight test rules I'm going to pre-rotate up to the maximum that the MTO3 will cope with which is 260 rpm. The benefit of doing that max pre-rotate is that it limits our ground roll we should be airborne that much quicker because the job of rotating the rotors up to the speed required for flight is being done more by the engine than by the air rushing towards us as we accelerate down and that's useful when the runway is on the short side as this one is but more particularly when it's bumpy as you can see not the smoothest of surfaces we're airborne and again it's getting the nose down to get a safe flying speed of 60 before we climb away My gyrocopter had had its annual service just the previous day. So because of that, this was the first flight after the service. It's always a good idea just to stay local to the airfield just in case anything should go wrong. It's generally a good idea in any form of aviation. The service itself does involve stripping down the engine, checking compression ratios, changing spark plugs. And I'd had a new oil radiator and piping system changed to braided metal from the previous rubber. So it was important just to stay local, just to make sure that nothing was leaking and everything was as it should be. And it also gave my instructor a chance to put me through a spot landing. But you can see now, you're getting a good view of runway 30 and you can see the obvious curve in it, which makes the approach look a little bit um, unusual. And what he wanted me to do at this point was to land to a specific point which he'd given me beforehand and to do so with power. And then once he was happy that we would have made the spot landing point, it's a go around, so full power. And from that point on, we enter the performance part of the flight test, so full power will be applied and it's a requirement of the LAA to see how high the gyrocopter is at 30 second intervals once full power has been applied. Just about to touch down just before we do. He's happy, full power. Obviously it wouldn't make the most exciting video to just sit here and watch our three minute climb at full power, but it's not something you particularly like putting your machine through. In general terms I'd be throttling back at 300 feet or so. But to do the, the flight test, it is full power and we leave it there. Actually the limiting factor in this particular case was the base of the airspace just outside the Liverpool zone and the limit of airspace that we cannot climb above is 2,500 feet. Liverpool has very recently introduced a listening squawk 5060 for those flying just outside of the zone and I had actually selected that and we were listening in on Liverpool 119.850 Liverpool Bridge and it was very useful that we were because at this point you may be able to see towards the bottom left of the picture there's an aircraft flying into Alton Park, the zone entry VRP and you can see him again here from this angle Listening squawks are a great idea and I'm personally really pleased that Liverpool have introduced the 5060 code because this is a very busy sector of airspace just at the bottom of the low level corridor you've got Manchester zone to the east, you've got Liverpool zone to the west and a lot of traffic funnels up and down the low level route which is exactly where Ashcroft is based. 
So at this point, we're doing possibly my least favourite part of the flight test, which is a dive to VNE, V never exceed, which is a very low 100 miles per hour in the gyro. And you can see it's coming up just there, and we just touch it. It doesn't take long to get to it. And you can hear the rotor when we recover. You can hear the rotor chop, 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 really builds up the G. When you pull back, that's what builds the G-force in the rotor. So now we're seeing what airspeed is required for the gyro to hover over the ground and typically in my particular MTO3 it's around about 30 miles per hour and once we're happy with that we then need to check out hovering descent as well. And you can see my instructor trying to see around my shoulders at the instrumentation. He's got no instrumentation in front of him in the back seat of my gyrocopter, he's just got a stick and rudder pedals, nothing else, there's not even a throttle in the back so brave man to be flying from there with me in the front. Now it's time to do some steep turns at cruise power in both directions. You're looking for around about 60 degree angle of bank. Ideally you don't want to add power, but it's pulling the stick back to tighten the turn. It's fantastic in a gyrocopter doing this. The view as you do it is just superb. It's also a safe manoeuvre. You can probably, maybe just about here, and you can see the rotor RPM build speed. Rotor RPM is just below my clock and it's high into the green zone at the moment and then when you pull G in the turn it increases the rotor RPM so it's actually, if you like, almost increasing safety uh, in the gyro. The next manoeuvre coming up is part of my biennial flight review and it's the recovery from a zoom climb. So we're flying along, level, suddenly enter a zoom climb, airspeed decreasing rapidly and here's the recovery. The recovery is throttle back to idle and let the nose fall, wait for it to fall, wait for it to settle and then to add power gradually. Not what you do in a fixed wing. In a fixed wing, that would be get the nose forward immediately and then add power, which is the single worst thing you can do in a gyrocopter. That can cause a powered pushover and it can also cause negative G in the rotor. So it's one of those where you've just got to remember I'm flying a gyrocopter today and not a fixed wing. Next thing is spiral dive recovery and they point this one out as being what might happen if you're just fixated on a point over the, the ground and all of a sudden find that you're descending very quickly. So it's throttle back to idle stick central, wait for it to stabilise and then gently pull back on the stick and you can hear the rotor build g-force again then. In general with a gyrocopter the recovery tends to be throttle back to idle, centre the stick, wait for it to settle. Not what you do in a fixed wing. And then I knew we'd do this. Threw me another practice force landing. We're 1500 feet at this point and the obvious field is straight in front of me. So at this point, we're doing another hovering descent because we are very high. So the speed is back to 55 or so, and you can see we're almost stationary over the ground. And there's the field, just to the middle left of the picture. Now after what happened last time, I was being very careful to make sure that there were no cables or other obvious obstructions. But from 1500 feet, it is quite difficult to actually really get a sense of the lie of the land. S turns coming in now to keep the rotor RPM up. And as I got lower, certainly below 1000 feet, I began to see that the field was actually sloping. So if this was a real force landing, what I would have done at the last moment is just turn slightly out of wind. The wind was not that significant. To avoid the downward slope, I would have taken the judgment that the um, avoiding the slope is more important than flying directly into wind. It's a decent field, it's certainly big. So I'm just talking through how I would have turned away from the slope. There you go, we'd have made it. Let's go around power.
So at this point the BFR and the gyro flight test is all complete and we're about to return to Ashcroft for a landing on runway 30. First time I've actually landed on that runway. And what we're doing here is a minimal ground roll landing. And this basically involves coming in 5 to 10 miles an hour slower than normal. So the gyro will land firmly but it will land with a much reduced ground roll and typically you'd want to do this if you were perhaps having to do a forced landing into a field with a standing crop. At that point you want to actually be contacting the crop with a, a lower forward speed as possible. So I'm not particularly fond of this picture, it looks too low and too flat for me but it's useful to see how it would look if we had to do this for real one day. So we're not down yet but there you go, we are down now and you can see we roll for I don't know, under 10 metres. So there we have it, BFR and gyro flight test successfully completed. Once again, I hope you have enjoyed this video. If you have, please do like and subscribe and I'll see you again very soon.